this gift of presence, this capacity to be in this moment. And this is the only place that life can exist. You know, we can ruminate, we can think about the past, we can anticipate and worry about the future, but there is no life to be lived there. We can only make moves towards cultivating the life that we want, the life that we choose, the life by design in this moment. And similarly, we can only take action to be the people that we choose to be in this very moment. You're listening to the Wisdom for Wellbeing podcast, the show that blends science and heart to bring you evidence-based tips and tricks for cultivating a healthy, wealthy, and meaningful life. Now, here's your host, therapist, yogi, and fellow full life balancer, Dr. Caitlin Harkis. Welcome to Wisdom for Wellbeing. My name is Dr. Caitlin Harkis. I am a clinical psychologist, yoga instructor, and I am really delighted to be offering you this episode in the hustle and bustle, the high point of the holiday season. You know, it's a few days until Christmas. If you are someone who celebrates, or if you have been engaged in different celebrations, events through this month, no doubt you are feeling you know the buzz of it all so to speak and well for some of us this might be a time that is associated with joy and delight for others it can be a time that is really painful and challenging And I think for most of us, regardless of the emotional tone, there is certainly a sense of overwhelm that can come with this season. You know, a lot is happening. There's lots of changes that are happening, disruption to routine, planning for events, a sense of, you know, the year ending and what that symbolically means as we lean into the next year. And as we lean into another year that has a tone of uncertainty to it, you know, these past years have been very uncertain for all of us, affecting us all in different ways as we globally navigate the challenges of a pandemic. And I think whilst we might have, you know, the moment of joys and excitements that may be coming with the holiday season, there is stress you know, on all fronts. So my intention of this episode today is to offer you some practical tools to help mitigate some of the stress, to help navigate some of the challenges that come with pressures, with stressors, and to provide a bit of a background as to this gift of presence. So I'd love to start off with a really beautiful quote. Now, this is a quote that you might have heard before. I wouldn't be surprised if you had, because when I was looking up the origins, it was attributed to many people, which is a way of saying lots of us have used um, this tone in, in our wording, in our writing. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. So today we are talking about then present moment awareness, this gift of presence, this capacity to be in this moment. And this is the only place that life can exist. You know, we can ruminate, we can think about the past, we can anticipate and worry about the future, but there is no life to be lived there. We can only make moves towards cultivating the life that we want, the life that we choose, the life by design in this moment. And similarly, we can only take action to be the people that we choose to be in this very moment. And this is important because stress can sometimes seem to derail our actions. So a stress response is attributed to a number of different elements. The first is our sense of competency or our self-efficiency, self-efficacy, our sense that we can handle what is coming with us. And this is, you know, individual. The things that cause me stress may be very different to the things that cause you stress. And interestingly, the things that cause me a sense of stress or overwhelm today might be different than those that, you know, overwhelmed me yesterday. And they might be different again from what might overwhelm or, you know, give me a sense of stress tomorrow because our resources are always changing and our resources, you know, between individuals, of course, differ. 
So resources are things like the amount of time that we might have. Time is a huge one, very valuable resource. You know, our financial resources, our skill set, our energy, you know, how much sleep we had the night before can affect our resourcing the next day and our stress response the next day. The friends, the family, how they can support us, how we can support them, all of these things will impact on our sense of competency to navigate a stress. The other thing that affects our stress response is how engaged we are in values consistent action. Values is something we talk about so much here on Wisdom for Wellbeing and for those of you that are Yoga Brain 101 students, which is my online, you know, um, psychology and yoga, it's an integrated course, um, we talk so much about values and values being the you know compass of your life so to speak when you are in alignment with your values you are clear on which way is north and you know that in going north in following your values you're going to be leading a life that is rich that is fulfilling that has a sense of vitality to it even when things are tough and this is why values consistent action relates to the stress response because when you are doing something that may very well be challenging but is in alignment with your values you're going to feel likely more empowered versus if you're engaging in a challenging behavior or there's a sense of pressure and it's not clearly connected to your values your sense of stress and overwhelm is likely going to increase. You're likely not going to feel as energized in this action as you might otherwise. And this is why getting clear on values is so vital. The third element of our stress response, and the final one we'll be talking about right now, is avoidance behavior. So avoidance being when you might ignore or deny stressors that are happening in your life as opposed to healthful coping and really being able to tap into present moment awareness. If we ignore or deny stress, it doesn't mean that it goes away. It means that the challenging emotions might creep up on us in different ways, you know, from clenching our teeth and pulling our shoulders up to our ears, stomach discomforts, or suddenly feeling like we've gone from irritable to angry in a split second. Ignoring the experiences we are having doesn't actually, you know, the research would suggest and practical experience would suggest serve us. If we can be aware of what's going on for us, we can make really clear values consistent steps to navigate the challenges, to navigate the stressors that might be on our plate. Perhaps this is relating to the lead up to the holiday experience that you've had so far, or perhaps this is just a little bit of a flag saying, oh, maybe we can tap in and notice what's going on here. And maybe we can connect in with what our values are in this season. You know, what is the intention of this celebration, so to speak? So I've mentioned present moment awareness and the gift of presence. I haven't defined it yet. <laughs> so I'd like to offer you a little bit of an explanation of what I mean by presence. Present moment awareness might be defined as non-judgmentally connecting with the psychological and the environmental experiences unfolding within you and around you. So being able to non-judgmentally connect with you know the difficult the challenging emotional experiences as much as the ones that might be joyful and delightful might be more easeful for you as well as what's unfolding around you so there's an environmental component here you know and different experiences happening externally from family dynamics to laundry piling up to deadlines and full calendars are going to affect us differently and being able to non-judgmentally connect with this is really the skill that we're talking about the zen teacher um suzuki roshi has a really beautiful way of describing present moment awareness you know tapping into this experience of presence and he says when you eat you should eat when you sleep you should sleep if only it was so simple right but this is where the practice comes in and i say practice because 
present moment awareness, well, we might see that wander and wonder in little children, you know, where they might stare off into the distance or be completely engrossed in an activity. It's something that a lot of us really need to practice to cultivate the present moment skill. And when we think of how present moment, you know, shows up, you might even think of when we're cultivating presence, we really want it to be something that is flexible. You know, being able to pay attention on purpose with flexibility and focus. So you can think of situations in which we don't have both of these elements, the flexibility and the focus. And one where I talk a lot about flexibility comes up with video games. Um, This comes up a lot. I'm not even sure if they're called video games now, to be honest. I feel like there's a different name for it, but it's been described to me and not having um, a recent experience. You know, I I was an avid Mario, Mario player on an original and Super Nintendo just to date myself, but with um with video games there is a description of being so focused you know arguably hyper focused on the video game that some individuals may not even notice when they're hungry you know or when someone might be calling out to them so that's an example of focus without the flexibility without being able to orientate and notice what's going on in a full sensory experience so being able to notice sensational experiences for instance in the stomach where one might be getting hungry or you know auditory cues from someone calling us and then another example is a sense of you know maintaining awareness flexibly but without focus and this is fluttering from idea to idea from one thing catching our eyes something shiny for the second and then we're off on to something else to be really effective we need to maintain and balance flexibility and focus connecting to this present moment on purpose the most common definition then of mindfulness is paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally this is a definition from john kabat zinn and it's very frequently used so you can see in there that mindfulness entails present moment awareness present moment awareness with acceptance is what we might then define as mindfulness. And now coming to present moment once more, we will come back to mindfulness. We're going there, but coming back to present moment awareness once more, I want to remind you of such a vital study that was done in regards to our present moment awareness. It's the Harvard study where we checked in on where individuals' attention was at any given point in time. And I know we've talked about it in this podcast before, but let me refresh one's memory. The study found that about 47% of any given person's waking hours was anywhere but present, you know, connecting with um, what's happened in the past, anticipating what will happen in the future, individuals were not present nearly half of their waking day, which is to say you and I are likely being, being kind of human beings that we are similar in terms of where our attention goes. What's even more interesting is that if individuals were in touch with the present moment, regardless of what activity they were doing, they rated their well-being higher, their levels of happiness higher. And it's not at all suggested that we go chasing happiness. Happiness being an emotion, it's quite elusive. We would ideally and most effectively live our life according to our values and, you know, our intentions to show up as the people we choose to be it's nice knowing though that a useful byproduct of connecting to the present moment may in fact be an emotional state that is more easeful and it's interesting because perhaps in being present with more challenging emotions when we actually connect into them it's like we demask the monster Things may not be as bad when we are not running, hiding, and fighting with them. How curious. And it is a practice. 
You know, coming into present moment is a practice. So this is where mindfulness really comes in because mindfulness is a skill that we talk a lot about and it is something that really truly can be practiced. And while it has historic roots of being associated with different spiritual practices, you know, particularly the construct of mindfulness has very clear Buddhist roots. Yet in the early 90s, we started to see it really integrating more and more into mainstream psychology. And first, it was John Kabat-Zinn with mindfulness-based stress reduction, which was one of the very first evidence-based interventions that introduced a secular form of mindfulness. From there, there was mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. And then mindfulness is also acknowledged as a very key component in more modern, what we might call third wave cognitive therapies, such as acceptance and commitment training, or ACT as we know it here in Wisdom for Wellbeing, which you would have heard a lot about in previous episodes, as well as DBT, dialectic behavior therapy. So mindfulness is very, very clearly integrated in these interventions as well. So with mindfulness then being a key component, it really highlights how important it is. You know, it's really well recognized that it's something that we can practice because ultimately the intentionality of mindfulness-based interventions is to support individuals to live, you know, more healthful, effective lives, to decrease perceived stress, anxiety, depression, to improve well-being and positive effect. And this is done by connecting into the present moment, cultivating the sense of mindful awareness with acceptance. And Stephen Hayes, so the founder of ACT, describes acceptance as experiencing events fully and without defenses as they are. So being able to be present with what is, which is not to say that one is engaged in a sense of resignation or, you know, the sense that one has to be totally passive. It's really being able to connect into what's here rather than avoiding our private experiences, our thoughts, our feelings, our bodily sensations, or becoming overly preoccupied with them. When we can accept this moment as it is, we are better equipped to choose flexible action and reactions that take us forward to our most meaningful, heartfelt life. And this is what I want for you in the holiday season, to be able to notice what's showing up for you internally and externally, to know where your heart is, to know what your values are, what your intention is for this holiday season, and as we move on into the year ahead, and then to be able to commit to action that is in alignment, that is in alignment with you and who you choose to be. So to practice mindfulness for the purpose then of cultivating present moment awareness so that you can be your best you, you might choose to engage in different types of meditation or mindfulness practices. So we'll start to parch it out again. Mindfulness is often a type of meditation, but meditation can be broader. So meditation is a real formal practice. So this might involve sitting down on a mat and engaging in an open awareness, which we might call a mindfulness meditation practice, where you open up to noticing thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations, notice what's coming and going, shifting and changing. It might be more focused where you focus really directly on your breath or a mantra, a sound that you're repeating or an object that you're looking at. It can also be a moving practice. You know, there are walking meditation practices. It might be something like yoga. Yoga can be done as a moving meditation. Mindfulness can be done in a more informal sense. So mindfulness could be done as you take a shower, you know, and you notice the presence of the sensation of the water as it flows, different thoughts as it may cross your mind, your breath, the smell of the soap, allowing yourself to be mindful, to be aware of what's coming up. So paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. 
you can mindfully drink your coffee. You could mindfully serve someone an appetizer or a drink at Christmas. You could mindfully decorate the tree. You can choose how you would like to show up mindfully and it might be something that with the intentionality of practice, you might set yourself a task to engage in two, three mindful activities each day, perhaps choosing activities that are less than two minutes to increase the likelihood of you engaging in them and the success of these activities. And we'll talk about um, habits and how this aligns with cultivating committed action and moving forward towards the life that you want to lead in the next episode. The reason I'm going to tie it in with New Year's resolutions, which are often about um, a very certain outcome. Habits can help us to get there and habits might help you to feel more aligned with your heart as well not to dive too much into it now, but that's where we're going next week. So in terms of then how you might establish a mindfulness practice in this, you know, hustle and bustle season, what would it be like if you chose three activities that you already do? You know, three activities such as maybe you have a cup of coffee in the morning or a cup of tea, maybe you brush your teeth and maybe your head hits the pillow. Maybe you pair mindfulness with those three activities, doing them in a very deliberate way, paying attention on purpose with awareness of what's coming, what's going, what's shifting and changing, cultivating an acceptance of what is, that non-judgmental awareness. I wonder what that would be like to have three bite-sized mindful moments in your day, knowing that whatever the day requires of you, driving from location to location, trying to meet deadlines, that there's going to be these three moments of reprieve. If you are someone who already has a mindfulness practice, a meditation practice, a yoga practice, then of course, integrating and reconnecting in those elements is going to be really beneficial coming back to what your intentionality is in these practices. Because ultimately behavior, when it's underpinned with heartfelt intentions, can be that much richer and feel that much more aligned and is likely to impact our behavior more broadly, more effectively. So coming back to what is the intention of mindfulness for you? What is the intention of meditation or yoga? Is it to show up as a kinder, more patient friend, family member, partner, parent? Is it to cultivate the focus that you need to be able to show up really effectively vocationally or in your creative pursuits? What is the reason? What's the why? And if we can tap into that, then you can anchor into that resolution, so to speak, that intentionality as you go through this busy season. And as you cultivate more and more present moment awareness, as you expand your capacity to be in contact with the present moment on a regular basis, you are likely to then see that your stress levels decrease, your experiences, the symptoms of anxiety and depression decrease while your sense of well-being improves. And being gentle with yourself in this process, one of the scary things can be with present moment awareness, uncomfortable thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations come up. And I am in no way suggesting that if something's feeling really overwhelming, you stick with it. This is where practices such as mindful walking or mindful movement or mindful coloring can be useful. You know, we can offer another vantage point, another sensory experience to support us in our titration of these mindfulness practices, of these present moment awareness skills that come with mindfulness. So if this is feeling really aligned to you, when this episode finishes, I would suggest you take a couple of moments, a couple of breaths to be with, to notice what is, and then to carry on with the rest of your day. And of course, if 
cultivating healthy habits and learning about habit construct and how we design, you know, really using behavioral science to design effective habits interests you, I would love you to grab your earbuds next week because that is where we will be heading as we move towards 2022 and the year ahead. I do just want to quickly remind you that in 2022, I will be opening the doors to Yoga Brain 101 once more. So the reason my online course is called Yoga Brain is it's really about cultivating psychological flexibility skills and how we can use the yoga mat as an experiential playground. This means that the course combines psychoeducational, Um, teachings in the form of tutorials, workbooks, as well as yoga practices and classes that are specifically designed to build on the psychological flexibility skills that you are instructed in each week. It is designed to fit in a busy schedule, so you do bite-sized lessons, apply them through the week, get onto the mat, and then jump back in in the week ahead. If this interests you, head to drcaitlin.com backslash yoga brain and you can join the waitlist. There is a discount that's offered to waitlist members and I'm coming up with a special opportunity for the new year as well. We might be opening the doors a little bit early, but I will have to tell you more about that in 2022 formally. For now, if you just head to drcaitlin.com backslash yoga brain you'll be able to join the waitlist and i will be jumping into your inbox to give you more details as we move forward to creating yeah my goodness a new year but without further ado i will let you get back to your holiday season and i will connect with you next week as we talk about little habits small habits that will have big results as you move forward into your new year bye for now Thanks for joining us this week on the Wisdom for Wellbeing podcast. Please visit drcaitlin.com to connect, find show notes, other episodes, and to subscribe. While you're at it, if you find value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating or perhaps simply tell a friend about the show. Wisdom for Wellbeing is not a substitute for professional, individualized mental health treatment. If you are in crisis, please contact 000, your local emergency number if you are outside of Australia, or attend your local hospital ED.